On this week's episode of the Build Show Network, I'm with TJ, who's the owner of Ecologic Insulation based out of Tiverton, Rhode Island. And on this episode, I want to talk about the six different types of insulation we commonly see in our market. Hey guys, Wade Paikman with WKP Construction. Behind me, we've got a mock-up that uh, Tom and I put together the other day. We've got six different types of insulation here. We've got closed cell insulation, open cell. Uh, we've got a cellulose, a paper face, paper faced uh, fiberglass insulation, rock wool, which is a mineral wool, and your standard um, unfaced fiberglass bats. Now, I typically use about three of these on my projects. I know, Tom, you're seeing a, a bit of variation as we are building differently and more efficiently in tighter homes. Um, why don't we go through each type of insulation and talk about the R value, pros and cons, and anything that you think um, kind of is a standout for any of these types of insulation. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's not uncommon to see a, a mix of all these products uh, at various stages of the construction process these days. Uh, the closed cell foam uh, is definitely going to be at the higher end of your insulation spectrum. You've got a highest R values per inch coming in at 7.2, and we can customize that depending on the, the demands for the project. Uh, common applications are below slab, foundation walls, um, retrofitting existing buildings where we've got limited depths and we need to achieve higher R values, and, uh, and mixed applications in roof lines uh, where we get the structural integrity, vapor barrier, and uh, a, an increase in, in closed cell at that base, and then we make up for it with some of the other forms of insulation. Um, coming down the line, then we have our open cell foam. Uh, still has a high R value of four per inch. Uh, we use, this is a, a three quarter uh, pound density foam, so a little denser than a traditional uh, half pound open cell foam. That's what gets us up to that four per inch. Um, this in a full two by six cavity, that's going to have us at about 22. Um, it still provides an excellent air barrier. A uh, little different than the closed cell, and that doesn't have the integrated vapor barrier uh, technology built into it. So that's why a lot of times they're used in conjunction with one another. Mm -hmm. uh, going down the line, we have uh, a dense pack cellulose application. Uh, in new construction, it's blown in behind the netting. Uh, in this example, we cut out a piece just for uh, a visual to see what the product looks like behind it. A uh, lot of interest in this in some of the, um, uh, the passive house and, and like ultra green building community, uh, largely due to its, its high recycled content. It's 99% mm -hmm. recycled mm -hmm. newspaper. Uh, does not provide a, a vapor barrier or air barrier. So sometimes you will see it in, uh, used with it, something like a smart membrane or mm -hmm. poly over the top. Mm -hmm. We got that smart membrane over here. We'll get into that in a minute. Correct, yeah. Uh, this is a, your, your run of the mill. Um, craft face fiberglass, you know, tried and true, been around for a long time in long the building time. industry. <laughs> uh, gets us where we need to be with an R value, uh, does not have any air barrier qualities. The craft facing does provide uh, a vapor barrier, uh, but it's a, it's, you know, if, if you want to refer to the, the SIGA and smart membranes as, uh, as, as, as smart membranes for moisture management, this would be uh, somewhat of a dumb membrane in that <laughs> it uh, just that provides too. a moisture block in both directions. It uh, doesn't really manage moisture, just, right. just stops it, right. uh, for better or for worse. Um, the craft the, the face and the unface, uh, they have a lot of popularity as a, a value insulation option as well. Uh, they tend to be at the lower end of the price range, um, so you, you, you hit your code standards at a, at a decreased price point. Sure. Um, Mineral wool functions similarly to the fiberglass in that it, it doesn't provide the, the air barrier or vapor barrier qualities, but it does have uh, some interesting attributes just as part of the manufacturing process. It's naturally fire resistant, water resistant. Um, it does install a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. It has a, a higher density than the fiberglass, which allows it to compress but then its flexibility expands back into place and you end up with a much tighter seal around the, uh, around the edges of the mm -hmm. product. Um, and, and so the, and the mineral wool that's in here right now, this is by Rockwool, um, is an R23, correct? So every other bay on this mock-up is a uh, 21. So just the fact alone that this, for a two by six wall assembly for the depth, you're getting that extra two uh, in the R value, right? Yeah, due to its density, it does come in at a slightly higher R mm -hmm. value as well, which mm -hmm. is definitely a benefit. And last but not least, your uh, standard old unfaced fiberglass. The unfaced fiberglass, yeah. Uh, it doesn't get any more basic than that. Yeah. Um, you know, this has been around a long time, and 
and now with uh, the introduction of something like a smart membrane, it, uh, it, it does have some value. Uh, we see that, uh, we find ourselves using it often for, uh, for sound applications as an acoustic product. Uh, sometimes in older homes where the framing is really chopped up and it can get difficult to work with the craft face, uh, it can be nice to work with the unfaced bats and then go over it with a, a continuous vapor barrier like mm -hmm. smart membrane after the fact. Mm -hmm. Now we've been changing our approach to how we're insulating our new homes. Um, we're using closed cell foam um, monolithically right under the slabs and up the foundation wall to the bottom side of the subfloor. And then we're picking up the wall assembly with Rockwell's mineral wool. And I personally haven't used the membrane yet. Um, we've used the Sega um, Myrex, uh, which I've been very pleased with so far. So we're doing um, a combination of the mineral wool and that one directional um, Myrex vapor control layer. And then on the roof deck, we're doing two inches of closed cell directly on the bottom side of the roof deck and then filling the roof rafter bay with the open cell to get, in most applications, we're getting around like R44, R50. So, you know, exceeding code on the ceiling, on the walls, and certainly in the basement. Are you seeing a lot of that um, on some of your other projects? Yeah, yeah, definitely a, a lot of mixed applications. It's been a, a popular trend in the industry now. Not uncommon for us to roll up with three or four of these products in mm -hmm. our truck to, uh, to take advantage of their different product attributes for various portions of the building. Are you also seeing um, a little less interest, right? For years, I, I mean, we did so many projects with just open cell. Mm -hmm. And then we've started to look at other options like we were just talking about. But are you also seeing um, maybe, let's say, a little less interest in open cell with people kind of expanding um, their options with things like these six different types? Yeah, uh, as the, the, the different options become more popular and you are seeing more of an integration of different types of material, um, yes, we, we will see a, a decrease in, in whole house open cell applications uh, and a shift towards integration of some of these other products and really using the foam products where, where their, uh, their attributes exceed uh, expectations and, and we really hit um, certain performance metrics that are required for the house and, and mixing in some of the uh, uh, maybe the lower cost options to, to meet budgets. Yeah, this membrane is this just simply stapled up. I know with the Sega um, Myrex that um, it's stapled on and then they have a specific tape, the Ryzen tape um, that goes around the perimeter um, and it's taped to your uh, rough openings and so forth and around electrical receptacle boxes and so forth. How is that? Because like I said earlier, I haven't used this yet. Is this just stapled up? Um, I thought I've seen a few videos where this has some uh, sealant behind it and some tapes. What, what is, how is the application on this? So for the representation here would have the membrane functioning strictly as a vapor barrier. Uh, if you wanted to use it as a continuous air barrier as well, uh, you would have to add some additional steps where you would see silicone sealant around the perimeter mm -hmm. uh, and tape seams anywhere that it overlaps or at so boxes. So a combination of both with the, with the membrane Correct. product. Cool stuff. Well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate your wealth of knowledge <laughs> yeah. on all these products. Where can people find you? You're out of Tiverton, Rhode Island. How can people get a hold of you? Yeah, our website is www.ecologicinstallation.com and uh, all our contact information is available there. Cool. And you can find us on Instagram at WKP underscore construction. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh, we'll see you soon right here on The Build Show.